In the endless reaches of the universe, there once existed a planet known as Krypton, a planet that burned like a green star in the distant heavens. There, civilization was far advanced, and it brought forth a race of supermen, whose mental and physical powers were developed to the absolute peak of human perfection. But there came a day when giant quakes threatened to destroy Krypton forever. One of the planet's leading scientists, sensing the approach of doom, placed his infant son in a small rocket ship and sent it hurtling in the direction of the Earth, just as Krypton exploded. The rocket ship sped through star-studded space, landing safely on Earth with its precious burden, Krypton's sole survivor. A passing motorist found the uninjured child and took it to an orphanage. As the years went by and the child grew to maturity, he found himself possessed of amazing physical powers. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. The infant of Krypton is now the man of steel. Superman! To best be in a position to use his amazing powers in a never-ending battle for truth and justice, Superman has assumed the disguise of Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Kent, I want to see you. Just received another threatening note. Okay, Mr. White. Lois, another note from the mad scientist. Coming in, Chief. Well, listen to this warning. He plans to strike tonight. Beware, you fools. My electrothanasia ray strikes tonight at 12. Total destruction will come to those who laughed at me and failed to heed my warnings. Beware, I strike at midnight. This nut may prove dangerous. Kent, you help Lois follow up her lead. She may have an angle on this thing. Yes, sir. But, Chief, I'd like the chance to crack the story on my own. No, no, no. Thanks, Chief. But, Lois... Chief, don't you think that's a dangerous mission? Ha, 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 ha. 
Louis Flatt, the mad Zionist, whose warnings have held the city in a grip of terror, went on his rampage of destruction on the stroke of midnight. The deadly impact of his mysterious ray smashed the famous Tower Bridge, hurling cars and pedestrians into the river below. The police have warned everyone to remain in their homes. This looks like a job for Superman.
Just getting the woman's angle on this story. The mechanical monster! Look out! I'll give you the details later, Chief. All right, Lois. Let... Lois! This is a job for Superman. is going to make. The jewels. What have you done with the jewels? You'll read about it in tomorrow's paper. Are you going to tell me what happened to those jewels? <laughs>
when she's doomed. Wonderful story, Lois. Thanks, Clark. But I owe it all to Superman. with you, Lois, but I have another story to cover. Oh, that's all right, Clark. I'll see you in the office. for Superman.
Superman. Superman turns up just when you need him. I didn't even get a chance to thank him. Penetrating deep into the frozen wastes of the great Arctic plains, an archaeological expedition searching for prehistoric fossils makes an amazing discovery. A huge monster, as lifelike in appearance as when it roamed the Earth millions of years ago in the Mesozoic Age, is found frozen in the ice in a state of perfect preservation. Constantly handicapped by the hazardous sub-zero elements, the scientists and their band of tireless workers succeed in removing the mammoth creature from the frozen pit. The ice-encased monster is loaded into the hold of a huge freighter equipped with a special refrigeration plant and brought to this country. Here, in a specially constructed wing of the Museum of Natural Science, this awe-inspiring creature is displayed to the public for the first time. say that if the ice were permitted to thaw, there's a possibility the monster might still be alive? Thank you, Professor. Yes, Chief. Lois, there's a new angle on that frozen monster story. Get over to the museum and see what's doing. They've got him in a special refrigerator. Okay, Chief. Oh, Lois, want me to go over there with you? No, thanks. You'd probably faint if you saw the monster. You scare so easily. Maybe she's right, but Superman hasn't fainted yet. And produces the necessary refrigeration. The control board is downstairs. I'll show it. The entire plant is operated from this board. The thermometer must be watched constantly as any rise in temperature might prove dangerous. Boy, 
What a story. in the museum. Better get over there, Kent. Right. This looks like a job for Superman. work to do. Yes, sir. And it's the best story in years. Well, chance. Getting that monster story, Lois. Thanks, but where were you? Me? Oh, I must have fainted.
Send in Lois Lane and Clark Kent. Give me a follow-up on this bullet car story. Attention. The destruction of your police station today was only a small demonstration of our power. Unless your mayor turns over the entire funds of the city treasury, power plants, firehouses, and all municipal buildings will be next. Take heed. This is your last warning. What are the authorities going to do about this, Mr. Mayor? We won't be intimidated by criminal threats. Law and order must and will prevail. This looks like a job for Superman.
got a great scoop for you. It was easy. Thanks to Superman. What do you think of the professor's show now? I still think it's pretty dangerous business. Hope nothing goes wrong. which are the combination of 30 years of dreaming and planning is impossible. Tonight, those dreams will become real. The Comet of Falcon will be my toy. Under my control, it will be brought to within a mile of us. Then, after a close examination, I'll send it back again into space. Your tampering with nature endangers thousands of lives. Yes, and even at the possible cost of those lives, I shall continue my experiment. I warn you, Professor, we're prepared to stop you. And I warn you, sir, any interference may prove disastrous. Stop! The editor. Look, Chief, the panic's on. The thing's gone haywire. Lois, Lois, what happened? Lois.
Oh, Superman, you were wonderful. <laughs> You're pretty wonderful yourself. Oh, how did you get here? <laughs> Thanks to Superman. Manhattan rightfully belongs to my people. Possibly, but just what do you expect us to do about it? You have a newspaper? Publish the truth. Have the island vacated immediately. It's fantastic. Why, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous? Maybe modern science will make you think differently. <laughs> never heard anything so absurd. You know, from the look in his eyes, I'd almost believe he was in earnest. No, he's just a harmless crank. Miss Lane, you wouldn't want to miss this story, I'm sure.
A girl is still down there. Just as good as ever. That's right, Clark. Thanks to Superman. On this peaceful island, crowned by the great volcano Mount Mauna Kea, occurred the mightiest eruption that ever shook the earth, burying the beautiful city beneath it in molten lava and creating destructive tidal waves that raced around the world. For 300 years, this mighty volcano lay dormant. A new and more beautiful city sprang up at its base. But now, after centuries of inactivity, slight tremors are being felt. At the Bureau of Meteorology, a group of scientists watchfully check delicate instruments to determine the seriousness of this renewed activity. you to send me some real stories. Now here are your steamship tickets and here are your press passes. You'll need these down there. Goodbye, good luck, and for Pete's sake, see if you two can work together for a change. Right, Chief. So long. Say, Lois, do you have my press pass? What makes you think I've got it? Sorry, sir, but you'll have to get one down at headquarters. Thanks. Uh, you go on ahead, Lois, and I'll join you later. Now, what did I do with that? Poor Clark. Too bad he lost his pass. <laughs> we can expect things to start popping at any time. In order to save the city, we've decided to blast the higher rim of the crater, thereby diverting the flow of lava away from the city and into the ocean below. Is the chief in? I'd like to see him about a press pass. He'll be back shortly. Won't you have a seat? Thanks.
How's the story coming, Lois? Oh, fine, Clark. Too bad you weren't in on it. Maybe I would have been if I hadn't lost my past.
always gets her story. And luckily, she lived to write it. Thanks to Superman. interfere with voyage to Tokyo. Attention, all pilots. Giant bomber being stolen. Take off immediately. <laughs> Where placed bomb will stop pursuit? Let's 
looks like a job for Superman. you are. He plane immediately or girl will be released. Okay, little man. You win. you showed up. Come on, come on, hand it over. Okay, boss. Here it is. This is a swell racket, boss. And the Superman outfit, it works like a charm. Gee, boss, it was only a fin. Next time, it'll be a Mickey Finn. Grammy turns full. Why, that's ridiculous. It couldn't be Superman. What do you make of it, Clark? Hey, you two. The editor wants you to cover the opera tonight. And don't forget, it's formal. Good. Now I can wear my new evening gown. It is 
doubles in for some trouble. Did you enjoy the opera? What's the matter, stupid? Did you lose your tongue? Don't stand there like a dummy. Give me the jewels. Are you trying to double-cross me? Why, you... Hey, boss, that's Mr. Superman. I didn't expect to see you here.
Well, say, who could sleep in a wagon like this? And it's been going on every night since we've been in turn. I don't suppose it could be. Could be sabotage. Oh. Me too. But who? Clark, do you suppose... Yes, Lois? Oh, nothing. Just a silly hunch that maybe Superman might be over here. Quiet. Do not talk. Shanasta. It's a bad My stop at once. Go to Tawa. Get away? 
No. No, oh, he's still over there. But don't worry. Superman promised to look after him. crimes, the body of an elderly man has just been found in the marsh flats outside the city. He has been identified as the watchman at the Metropolis Munition Plant. There's a story, or I'm no reporter. He is believed to be the victim of an organized ring of saboteurs. More news later. Oh, sounds like there might be a story at the plant, Lois. Lois? Me name is Lois, not Lois. Gee whiz, everybody in Twifelates me name wrong. It's Lois. L-O-U-I-S. Lois, er, uh, uh, Louise, er, uh, Lucy. Now I'm so mixed up, I don't know who I am. Okay, Watchman, take your post in the main shop. Be on the alert. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Pardon me. That was a good job you did on the watchman last night. Now, uh, how about that dynamite charge under the shops? It's wired to the switch on the plant floor below. But the new watchman pulls that switch tonight, the whole Shh. place... Will... Here comes the torpedo. 
torpedo now. And that old hulk out there is the target. Naturally, for experimental purposes, there is no explosive in the torpedo. Jordan, yet you admit these fingerprints are yours. Yes, but but you don't. That's all. Can't speaking. Hello, Daily Planet. This is Dr. Wilson of the Egyptian Museum. I've just uncovered something that may free Miss Hogan. Yes, Doctor. Uh, I, I've been feeling much better lately, but I'll be right over. I'll see you later, Lois. Doctor's orders. Doctor, my eye. Dr. Jordan was the world's foremost student of hieroglyphics. Most of our priceless specimens were brought back by him. Even the mummy of King Tush. Among his possessions, I uncover this ancient Egyptian tablet and find it to be a secret curse of the tomb of King Tush. He who disturbs the eternal sleep of King Tush shall perish. This tablet may well be Miss Hogan's passport to freedom. Come with me, please. years ago, the 
the valley of the Upper Nile was ruled by an old and powerful king. He had been warring with the Lower Nile for many years, and just before the old king died, he called his son to him, the young boy of twelve. He commanded his giant guards to swear an oath of eternal allegiance to the boy prince to guard him constantly in this world and the next. Shortly after, the old king died. The youth of twelve now ruled the kingdom of ten million people, but the boy was not fashioned for such responsibility, and being of a sickly nature, soon became ill himself. Never was a person attended more faithfully than this youth, yet he withered away and soon died. True to their oath of allegiance, each of the royal gods drank poison, so that they might continue to protect the spirit of their young king in the Valley of the Dead. Here in these catacombs, Dr. Jordan has reconstructed the burial vault exactly as he first discovered it in one of the pyramids. Working for years in absolute and frenzied secrecy, he finally duplicated an ancient mystic formula, which he called the fluid of life. Just before he was found dead, Dr. Jordan had inoculated each of the mummies of the giant guards. They were supposed to return to life, but somehow the test failed. Dr. Jordan was found here at the feet of King Tush. The rest you know. But what you don't know, Mr. Kent, and what I am equally certain of, is that Dr. Jordan violated the ancient warning by attempting to open the coffin of King Tush. A poisonous needle. That's how Dr. Jordan was killed. Yes, and Miss Hogan is a free woman. I shall be glad when I'm finished with my work here. Uh, Captain, the submarine fleet commander is impatient for news of the American convoy. He will be advised of its location shortly. To your post. By stealth. Fleming. Miss Lane. Yes? Here. Take these. 
important papers and destroy them. Ah, American stubbornness. I give you just ten minutes to remember what you did with those papers, or I will be forced to brighten your memory with fire. So! So what? Das ist genug! That's fine. I warned you, Fräulein. Unless you talk, I will make no effort to interfere with these natives. Oh, cut the comic opera stuff. Very well.
War Department goes on to say that during this action, an entire fleet of Axis submarines was destroyed by American dive bombers, affording the troop ships a safe crossing. For the mighty mission, praise the Lord, and has the ammunition and will all... And while on a hunting trip, my father discovered what are now known as the Henderson Caverns. More than 40 years ago, he mysteriously disappeared while exploring them further. Recently, I found these maps and charts he left, suggesting that still greater wonders and mysteries lay beyond in this vast underground world. Now, if your paper will help finance the expedition, I will take Miss Lane and Mr. Kent with me and guarantee the Daily Planet exclusive rights to the story. Sounds like a great story, Chief. I'd love to go. Well, let me see. All right, it's a deal. Thanks, Mr. White. We can leave immediately. Careful now. Those are explosives for the blasting we'll have to do. We're shoving off, Kent. Meet you in the Blue Grotto. So long, Clark. See you later, Lois. of him.
is a job for Superman. was a close call. I've got to get to police headquarters immediately. What? You're damnless and sharp, Skipper. I send you out to bring back that woman. And what happens? You let her get away and bring me this fool. She must not get to the airport. She must be stopped. They are probably the largest and most ruthless gang of saboteurs in this country. I know. For six months they thought I was one of them. This briefcase contains a list of their names, together with their diabolical plans of destruction. They will stop at nothing to recover these records. I must get them through to Washington. Mm, I understand. I'll see that you have an escort to the airport. She's heading this way. Quick!
she's trapped on a bridge. The place is surrounded by cops. Hello, Edridge. Hello, hello. Zum Donnerwetter. Something went wrong. We've got to get those records. Zum Teufel, was sollen wir tun? Schmeiß die Wände ein. 